What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are continuing on the Ford 428 and the goal for this video is to finally install the crankshaft. So we're just going to polish up the crank journals a little bit, get them cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to put on the bearings right here and measure all the clearances with some plastic gauge. And then I'm also going to put on the rear crank seal. So there's a special way to put this on so I'll show you guys how I do it and then finally torque everything down and install it. But uh, let me show you guys some parts I'll be using and then we'll get to working on the crank. So let's do it. All right, so these are all the parts I'm gonna be using. And check out the rear main seal. This is by Felpro and here's the part number for that. But uh, I'll put all the numbers of these parts in the description below. But I'm pretty sure this same exact set has been used by several engine builders and they've had no problems at all. You just can't go wrong with Felpro. I think they make some really good stuff. So that's that, the Speed Pros. So I kind of talked about these in the second video, but these are made by Federal Mogul. And the special thing about these is that it doesn't have a flash tin layer like the rest of them do. And I'll put up a picture of the specifications on these bearings, but Speed Pro claims that that layer can move under hard load, hard acceleration. And it's kind of funny if you <laughs> check out these bearings. They kind of look a little dingy like they've been used before, but that's completely normal. Let me take one of these out. Check that out. So usually they're like really shiny, but these are pretty dull. And the first thing you want to do is just go over all the bearings. Make sure there's no nicks or huge gashes in one of these. These look really good. I've already checked them. A little bit of debris, but we'll get all these cleaned up before we actually install them. But check this out. This this is a three-quarter groove, and it's just huge. And I have the, an original Ford bearing for comparison. Check this out. And there you go. <laughs> and they completely eliminated that circle here. They just made the whole center of the bearing the oiling hole. So a lots and lots of oil we need all of it all the oil and all the oil pressure going to these bearings that's <laughs> what all the fe guys say but these are really really nice let me put carefully put these back right there check out the crank this is what we are working with and the machinist did clean it up a little bit but he did not turn over the journals we are still using the standard sized bearings. He just said the crank was still in very good shape, so there was really no need for machining. But uh, all we're gonna do is just polish up these crank journals. As you can see, it's really dirty, and we wanna get this as polished up and as smooth as we can get it. Uh, the goal here is not to really remove any material. We just want to polish this as best as we can. So for this process, I'm going to be using some 1500 grit with some WD-40. And I'm just going to wrap it around a cloth around the whole circumference here and then just go back and forth so it can get all of the surface here. And once we hit that, we're going to use this crocus cloth. And I didn't really know about this too much. I did some research and apparently this is very common within the machinist community but this is just like a very very fine abrasive backed with like a i guess it's a cloth backing not a paper backing so it's pretty strong but it's just super super fine and this is what we are looking for when we are polishing this type of metal but after the crocus cloth i'm going to hit it with the blue magic metal polish this stuff is just amazing i use it on everything and this is going to seal it and give me that super nice shiny look that i'm going for so enough talk let's get this crank polished up and let's install it in the block let's do it
right crank is all done check it out came out really nice uh, if you take a closer look you can sort of still see the lines here from the old bearings but uh, if you put your fingernail across it it doesn't catch on these lines so i think it'll be fine um you know a lot of people are going to disagree with me here but like i said i really didn't want to remove any material from these journals i didn't want to go too aggressive with the sandpaper to try to remove these lines and then increase the bearing tolerances my goal was just to get the surfaces as smooth as i can get it and with that crocus cloth it got it super smooth but uh you know the machine has said the journals were fine and they look pretty good to me um it's not a track car or anything i won't be taking it to the, the drag strip uh it's just a cruiser so i think we'll be fine and i'm just gonna get this crank in the block we're gonna measure up the clearances with some plastic gauge just uh do a little double check and then finally install it so let's do it you guys we are done check it out man this crank is spinning smoothly and i'm just getting super excited i just cannot wait to start this thing but uh you know <laughs> i know some people will say hack job <laughs> uh really what i'm just trying to do is follow these books and you know follow these youtube videos and trying to piece everything together to successfully build this engine you know i've never done this before so it is going to be a you know learning curve 
as always but uh, I did have a problem when installing this crank and I want to be completely transparent I don't you know when you're building an engine and nothing's gonna be perfect but the problems that I had was when I was installing this fourth main cap um, when I was tightening it down it was just popping you know I was going pop 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 and that, <laughs> that freaked me out so I completely stopped and uh, took it took this apart and cleaned up the threads um, when I took this main cap and I looked at it I got a pretty good surprise so let me show you guys what I found and here you go this is what I found and you can see this bearing is just trashed you could see a pretty fine line right there. You could feel it with your fingernail. It's just messed up. The top bearing here is still pretty good. It did have a little bit of scratches, but you can't feel it with your fingernail. So I caught I could have probably reused this, but you know, I don't want to take my chances. So I ended up buying another bearing set and <laughs> that sent me back another $80, but you know, I took this as a learning lesson. You know, I guess you, you live and learn like they say. But, uh, you know, I was really trying to figure out what what the problem here, you know, how this happened because I was trying to be really, really clean with this engine assembly. And there's really not a lot of dirt around here. But then I figured it out and it turned out to be this hammer that I was using. And every time I would hit it, there would be debris falling off right here. So that's a big no-no. Um, hopefully this mistake will sort of give you guys a, a, a conscience, you know, of what type of tools you're using and what you're doing to assemble this engine and help you uh, save some cash in the process. But there you go. That was problem number two. But uh, once I tightened down the fourth bearing and I cleaned up the threads here, man, that thing was just smooth as can be i did check the rest of the bearings and they were all really good so i put those back together but uh just a couple of notes for you guys um i know that there is a torque sequence when tightening these mains down but in the book here it says to uh do numbers one two and four first with the number three bearing which is the thrust bearing and that one we use the you know the pry bar I don't know if you saw in the earlier clip I had someone pry it forward and then tighten it down and for this thrust bearing clearance this crankshaft end play we are looking for a 0.004 to 0 0.010 um, I don't have a dial indicator so I went with the feeler gauge method and I got a 0 0.006 so that's where we want to be at um, I think this is a pretty good method to do because when you're tightening down the mains, you know, one by one, you're spinning the crank and you're making sure that there is no binding. So every time you tighten one down, you turn it and that will indicate which one is a problematic one. And the last note that I want to talk about are the clearances. And for the main bearings, I got a 0 .003, which some people will say is optimum. Others will say it's not. Uh, you, you know, in the book, it says that 0 .003 is like the maximum clearance that you want. And some builders actually prefer that. So that's what we got on all the mains right here. But, uh, you know, when you're assembling an engine, what you really want to pay attention to are the clearances. So on the crankshaft end play I got a 0 .006 and as I'm building this engine I want to keep in mind these clearances and I'll put up a picture of this sort of like this checklist that I made so you know as long as we're building this engine and we're checking these clearances this engine will have a long life and that is a goal but uh, I'm gonna end the video here guys and all I will say is you know nobody is perfect we all try to be the best that we can with what we have and the important thing is that we solve these problems and we figure out what happened you know and we continue forward with whatever obstacle we have um, if you know I know there's some people out there that have been building engines a long time so any tips would be appreciated but uh, that's it if you guys like the content, you guys like the videos, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Boom. Mm -hmm.